minutes. Is there a motion? Moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Tab two. Yes, sir. Would you like for me to read the memo? Please. Okay. The Community Redevelopment Agency, CRA, is the owner of the parcel of land located at 301 Civic Court, the property. On September 2nd, 2016, the CRA and the District Board of Trustees of Miami-Dade College, the college, executed an option and agreement for conveyance of the property to the college, the agreement, for the development of a student advancement center and an entrepreneurial education center. The college exercised its option to acquire their property in accordance with the terms of the agreement on September 4th, 2018. The agreement requires the college to construct a building that will be at least three stories high and complement the scale and design of City Hall and the college's Homestead campus. The main entrance to the building must face Civic Court. The agreement requires the college to submit to the CRA board renderings showing the proposed style and general external appearance of the building. The CRA board, acting in its proprietary capacity, is being given the opportunity to review and approve the renderings. If the CRA board does not approve the renderings, the college can either terminate the agreement or submit new renderings. Once the CRA board approves the renderings, no substantial or material changes can be made to the renderings without the prior approval of the CRA board. In compliance with the timeline for conveyance of the property to the college, the college has submitted the attached building renderings for approval by the CRA board. Staff recommends that the CRA board approve the rendering submitted by the District Board of Trustees of Miami-Dade College, the college, for the development of a student advancement and entrepreneurial education center to be located at 301 Civic Court. The proposed renderings are in accordance with sections 5.3 and section 10 of the option and agreement for conveyance of real property between the CRA and the college dated September 2nd, 2016. Uh, representatives of the college are here to answer any questions that the board may have with regard to the renderings. We have uh, the college president of Homestead Campus, Dr. Jean Jacobs. Is, are, are the renderings just what's in the, in the, in our packet? Yes, sir. No proposal, no no visual. We do have um, on the, on the screen. We can put up the renderings. Okay. But and they did bring an actual there. hard the copy. The architects of the are here. Wanted to walk you through the reason we had this provision in the contract is approvals for schools are a little different. So we wanted to make sure at the front end you were comfortable with the the design, and so that's why we put in the contract that it would have to be approved by you all before. They move forward, and, and the, the, there's a closing on the property. So we only want to make sure everybody saw what it is. And from there, the approval process, there is not a whole lot of oversight in the city's part. So once we get to closing, this, this actually would be the best place for people to have their input if they wanted it. And so we wanted to just make sure you everybody understood the architecture. And if you don't mind, uh, uh, Dr. Jacobs and the architects be happy to give you a brief presentation. Good evening. Good evening. Is this on? It yes, is on. it is on. Members of the Community Redevelopment Agency, thank you very much. We are very pleased to be here this evening, and we're very excited uh, about our agreement and the great collaboration with the City of Homestead. In keeping with our agreement, um, we are submitting this evening the renderings for the proposed building at 301 Civic Court. And I am pleased to have with me this evening the Vice Provost for Facilities, Dr. Robert Vasco, as well as the architects who designed the renderings, Raul Rodriguez and Ivan Bibas from Rodriguez and Caroga. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the architects to go through the renderings. Hi, thank you for having us here. We really like this building. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, the uh, charge was an easy one to try to complement this building. The, urbanistically, what we want is to have it be like two bookends, City Hall and this building, as an entrance to Civic Court. And at the same time, have the building turn the corner and lead people onto the main entrance of the campus. 
that's what it is. Uh, I'll have Ivan take you through each one of the floors and what it is that's in each floor. Can everybody hear okay? Is it? Okay. A little closer to the microphone. Yeah, if, if you, you can. can. Hello. So the building is four stories high, 58,000 square feet big, uh, 14,350 square feet per floor. And uh, if, in so far, the uh, space allocation per floor is student services would occupy first and second floors. Um, then the third floor is the entrepreneurship uh, center, uh, including classrooms and labs. And then the last floor, the fourth floor, is a conference center. And that's as much as we know about the building. Yeah. See. Mayor, one of the things that we had negotiated that why this was part of phase three of the downtown revitalization plan was we know they have almost 20,000 students on their campus, but rarely do we see them. So the idea was for us to find a linkage between their students, their college, and then try to get that synergy into the downtown. Of course, with movies coming and bowling and retail and restaurants and that kind of thing, we think there'll be a natural gravitational pull, but we think this is the first stop to drawing their students off the campus. And so right now, everybody kind of parks in the lots, and although some of them park here, which we had the conversation with Dr. Jacobs, and she's gonna help us make sure they park where they're supposed to park, but uh, the idea here is to really get the students' presence into the downtown and also to create this, this presence for the college, which says this is where the campus is. This is where the college is. Initially, we had thought there'd be some sort of an entry feature in, on the street, but they designed a building that so far exceeded our expectations in terms of its grandeur that you know, we may come back to you and change the agreement from a shall put an entry feature to may because they don't have that budgeted. And this is such an ambitious project. They really put their money where their mouth is with this building. So we think that um, in terms of what we asked for them to achieve, they've gone above and beyond that. And uh, But the concept here really is about downtown revitalization and, and also to try to meet the spirit of what the Carrie Meek Center was all about. And so there is a... Uh, an entrepreneurship element to this as well. And Dr. Jacobs, if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, I think that would be helpful. Yes, in keeping with the agreement and, and um, I think a great commitment and need in the community, there are really two components. This will be a student success center, and that is an epicenter for all of our student services. It's that first stop in which students would come to the college and enter the college. Um, secondly, we wanted to make sure we preserve the great work that had been done before and um, in looking at entrepreneurship and innovation, especially for this area and serving the small businesses of the community. So as a result, you know, we're devoting a whole floor to that institute. Of course, it will be a multi-purpose space but we're envisioning a lot of programming in that space specifically uh, for the community and for our students and to really prepare them for the future, for future business in, in this community. Because one idea is to really retain some of the talent we have here. Let me say this, Dr. Jacobs. I know you've been at the table with us a long time and you've seen how you know the city has you know, really made an effort to, to revitalize the, the downtown area. And, and this public-private partner, this private partnership that we have here, it's nice that you and the college have stepped in and stepped up and, and, and partnered with us because we really wanted, all of us really wanted that, but we didn't know if we were gonna be able to make it happen, if the college is gonna be able to make it happen. So to, to be able to sit here today, and obviously and having Raul and his team, you know, involved in it really, um, you know, like, like the manager says, it does bookend, you know, this, this area, which is, has been a vision from, from, from the very beginning. And you've been a part of that vision. And now mm -hmm. to be able to sit here tonight and close the, you know, close the loop on it is really, um, you know, it's nice. It's very nice. And thank you and the college and, and your team for, you know, stepping up and, and participating with us. So thank you. And we truly do value, I think, this relationship and partnership that we have with the city. So we're looking forward to it. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. I, I too, am, am, am overwhelmed when I looked at this and, and 
several years back when we started this project or even started the discussions, you know, we, we, we didn't even know if you guys were going to come back to us at all. You did come back to us. We thank you for that. And to bring this uh, uh, building back tonight, which is way above where I ever thought we would be, you, you know, with the first discussions and first thoughts that were, were put out there. So I want to say thank you to you guys for that. But I also do want to reiterate what the manager said. We've got to look at some parking over there because you're taking now you're taking about 100 spots away with this new building, and uh, that are used frequently, if not daily, every day. So we've got to start to look. The, the college needs to look at where we're going to start to put the students. And I know you guys keep expanding every year, and there's only so many spots. So just something for the back of the mind as you guys are, are moving forward with your projects over there. But thank you. This is. Um, uh, a, a job well done and, and great to have you guys as a partner down here as we try to revitalize so thank you thank you and we are um, we are addressing the parking <laughs> it's a great problem to have though <laughs> it tells you that we're growing and it tells you that the city is growing um, but we are hoping to develop our flagler lot to really handle much of the overflow so we're working on that as well mr roth thank you mayor Dr. Jean Jacobs, congratulations. Thank you. I know this project has been on the back of your mind for, for many years. And, and the drawing and the building, the way it looks, if it turns out this way as City Hall did many years ago and it came to be what it is today, uh, it's great. And I like the camouflage job <laughs> on the building next door with the trees there. And I would hope that and request that somebody uh, looks at and talks to Bell South or whoever owns that building there, AT&T. Uh, we've spent $25 million on this building. They're spending how much on your building? Mm -hmm. This building? Yeah, it's projected, I mean, that's today probably about $36 million. Okay, so we've invested a lot of money in this area and we spent money on Washington to clean up the facade across the street from City Hall. So I think it's time to work on some of those aesthetics as they go into the college there as well. So I'll put that challenge out there. But congratulations. I'm very excited for this. And uh, I look forward to doing some mentoring to the students. So keep that in mind as you guys, uh, you know, progress in the, in the progress of this building. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And you know we welcome that mentoring. And you call me anytime. Okay. Any other questions from council, comments from council? Vice Mayor? No, I just would like to echo the sentiment of my fellow colleagues here and, and just say I'm, I'm happy to see this building come back. It, it's a beautiful building. You know, I think it'll be a good complement to this building and, and our vision for downtown. Uh, and so I think it's very exciting. I remember we, I think it was probably two years ago. I'm not exactly sure the time frame now. Time flies by, but, um, but I know that we, we worked hard together to try to come up with a plan that would not only bring an aesthetic building to our downtown, but also you know, something to replace the Kerry Meek Center and the spirit of the Kerry Meeks. And so I know you guys are willing to step up and, and provide that service and provide that um, function for our, for our community. And so I want to thank you for that. And I, I'm excited about this moving forward. And uh, do you happen to know a time frame when we think from, from now renderings to, say, construction and completion? Do we have a, a ballpark time period? Um, well, we do have a timeline, and it's outlined in the agreement. And I don't have that in front of me, but I, I believe our attorney has or you would have that timeline as well. Yes. Um, because so there's several points throughout the Yeah, I know there's the a agreement. lot of check marks yeah. here to get yeah. through. But the, uh, we're now in, the, the college is in its Pull your mic down, Gail. Period. Pull your mic down, please. Sorry, sorry. The college is currently in its due diligence period, which I believe ends on December 3rd. Um, I don't have the timeline in front of me, but I know it quite well. And, um, I don't so need the exact time frame, just a, okay. so two years, the, three years. The earliest, the closing could be as early as January of next year. Um, there are some matters that need to be addressed that may take a little right. longer than that, but it's, you know, there's someone occupying the building that needs to vacate, and that will be happening. Um, and we are also rezoning the property, right. which will happen very shortly. Um, so I'd say, you know, if not in January, sometime not long after that. That would be construction start, potentially closing, no, and then... No, that would be the closing on... Right. We would convey the land, and then after that, the college has a year, um, I believe, to start construction. 
and then they have two years to to finish construction. Okay, and that's so all I needed. So, so hopefully within two years we'll have we'll have this beautiful building across the street. Right. And give, right. Or, give or take, and we wanted to make sure we had realistic timelines in this contract so that it was achievable. Right. The, the reason why this was two years for their fundraising is raising 30 some odd million dollars for college is a big deal. Sure. And it really, this is a miracle. Truthfully, two years came and here it is, 30 some odd million dollars. But then closing, give or take a few months, some wiggle room, architectural six to eight months, give or take, their procurement process, bidding, you know, there's a bunch of stuff. And then after that, when do they start digging and building? It's a big building, and it's so I would say there's going to be a six-month swing, likely, and uh, we're prepared for that. And that's um, if if all that happens that way, it'll be perfect. No, that's, I, I just was looking for a ballpark. I don't, I'm not looking for deadlines at this point. I just wanted to get an idea of when I could, in my mind, start mentally getting ready to walk out and see that yeah. construction and then ultimate completion. So I know I'll set the timer for two years, and then I'll then I'll start getting excited. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Ms. Fairclaw? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, Dr. Jacobs, I'm not surprised that we're here at this point. You are definitely a marquee player in the city of Homestead, and the work that you have done in this community for years is, is very commendable. And outside of the aesthetics of the building and the fact that it meshes well with the city hall and the downtown space, I am particularly um, happy about the fact that you're continuing to carry on that tradition of serving as an incubator for those budding um, entrepreneurs who want to definitely move on to be um, developing businesses in the community. So thank you for your commitment to that. And I'm sure you're definitely going to get a return on your investment as well as that halo effect in the city of Homestead in general. So thank you for your commitment to education in the city of Homestead. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Jenkins, I'm going to open up this to public comments. If there's anyone from the com anyone from the public that would like to come and speak on tab two, you're welcome to come forward. Okay, close the public comment portion. Any there. final comments? From I did want to mention the architects, Rodriguez and Caroga, because Why? they take great pride in their work, and this is really, uh, they've outdone themselves on this one. We're brilliant. No, every, everything that, that his team has done has been over the top. And, and, you know, to say this is better than, the first rendering was pretty good, but this one's over the top, over the top. So... Paris. Oh, okay. Is there a motion? Is there a second? second? Any final comments? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board Member Maldonado. Yes. Board Member Bailey. Yes. Board Member Burgess. Yes. Board Member Fearclaw. Yes. Board Member Roth. Yes. Vice Chairman Shelley. Yes. Chairman Porter. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Um, tab three. Skipping the tab three? Did we, we skip two? two? No, you're right. It is tab three. That was tab two. Mm -hmm. So we're on tab three, right? I was just making sure that you guys were paying attention. Uh, <laughs> Mitra, yes, I just wanted to start us off if we could. I just wanted to put this in context. This, you know, all charged us with trying to figure out how to get some development on this site. It's been a, a long time uh, coming. And so Kamitra went out there and started the process, trying to get you some proposals that hopefully you'll be happy with. We have two proposals that we wanted you to see. And it'll give you an opportunity to say, are we in the right direction? You want to go in a different direction? If you like one of them, uh, then we'd be happy to start uh, negotiating a contract and bringing that back to you. So uh, we have the two proposers here. And Kamitra, who is first, is? Centennial Management. So, so Centennial Management is first, if you don't mind us bringing each of them separately. And then, uh, so with that, uh, Kamitra. So during the month of June 2018, staff received three separate proposals for housing and mixed-use projects on the CRA-owned property located at 866 Southwest 7th Street, commonly known as the shotgun property. Staff subsequently published a public notice pursuant to Section 163.383A, Florida Statutes, 
that the City of Homestead Community Redevelopment Agency intended to dispose of its interest in the real property located at that address. At the end of the 30-day notice period, the original three developers were the only respondents. Each developer then presented their project concept to staff during the months of September and October. On October 11, two days after making a second presentation to staff, Florida Global Group withdrew its project from consideration. Centennial Management Corporation and Homestead Housing Authority, HHA, will each be presenting their proposed projects tonight for the CRA property. Staff is seeking direction from the CRA board, and if the board decides that they would like to move forward with one of the projects tonight, we will return with you, uh, to you with a negotiated agreement, with a recommended negotiated agreement. So with that said, if you would like, Centennial Management is prepared to do their Please. presentation first. Please. Okay. Hi, this is Lewis Sweezy and Brian Jaffe from Centennial Management. We'd like to do our presentation on Lucy Landings. It's a four-acre site, which I think everybody in the city of Homestead is familiar with. And everybody Brian, here? Brian is... Let me, to Lewis, let me, get, let me get you a hand mic because you're, you're tall and... <laughs> Thank you. This is Lewis Sweezy with Centennial Management, the president, with Brian Jaffe. Brian wants to... Uh, Tonight, I'm going to let Brian do his first presentation in front of a city commission. So if he's bad or anything, I'll fill in for him. But I'm sure he'll do a great job. Probably a lot better than I could ever dream of doing. So thank you. All right, well, I want to start off and thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for letting us have the opportunity to stand up here and present our, our project that we're really passionate about and feel is a great development for this area. So. We named it Lucy Landings just because it's off Lucy Drive. We are willing to change the name if it comes up, but that's kind of what we feel is a great name for that area. So a little bit about Centennial Management. We're a developer and a full service real estate firm. Under the leadership of Mr. Swayze, we have developed over 3,500 apartment units and he has over 38 years of experience. Our portfolio includes affordable housing, market rate housing, mixed use, mixed income, commercial retail, industrial, and land holdings, all in South Florida. We handle every step of the development process, from land acquisition, to the financing, to the construction, and then the property management. So these are a few of our projects located in South Florida. As you can see, we try to make them as luscious and pretty as possible. We have over 3,500 residential units and approximately 900,000 square feet of commercial, retail, and industrial space in the Tri-County area. These are some of our current projects, uh, La Jolla Apartments, Miami Stadium Apartments, and Banyan Club Apartments. This is kind of interior of those. And our current and future developments, we are partnered with the Boyden Beach CRA to do Ocean Breeze East, which is an apartment, affordable apartment community of 123 units. In the city of Miami, we worked with them to develop this, hopefully, stadium tower apartments of 113 units. And in Naranja, we have Orchid Estates that was just completed, which is 74 units. So Lucy Landings, our Kind of the overview of it is we want to do a multifamily or uh, elderly development. Primarily, we want to do an elderly. We think that's best suited for this land. Um, but we wanted to have the option to give you guys as well as for the financing options if we decided to do family. But our company strongly believes that elderly is what we should be doing. So we will be utilizing the sale funding from the state, Florida Housing Finance corporation but also we if it is a family development if you guys if that's something that the city and the CRA wants we will apply for surtax funds 
So we're, proje we're proposing an 83 unit development and we are offering $500,000 to purchase the land. So if we are selected, we commit to purchasing the land in cash up front and before any of the financing options. So this is kind of a conceptual plan of if we decide to do the family, it will be three garden style apartment buildings with a clubhouse as well as a retail component. But this is the elderly site which we believe is best suited for this area. It's a three story elderly development building with elevators as well as a green space and an out parcel retail of approximately 2,000 square feet and we could increase that if the commission decides to. Some of our proposed features would be green certification as well as balconies, granite countertops, tile, the whole thing. Just beautiful and a great project. So the retail component right now we're proposing about 2,000 square feet. If we do the elderly we think the best tenant would be a medical facility like an MD now I think would be perfect for that area if the development is elderly. So for option one, the family, if it's sale or surtax, this is one of the renderings that we came up with. We would have a playground, it would be a fully gated community, a clubhouse for tenant activities, um, alarm ready units, hurricane impact glass, and landscaping as well. That's This is the floor plans. So this is kind of an overview of the pro forma, the sources and uses for the family development if we use their tax funds. So this is the option two, which we kind of are favoring right now. And it's elderly with the funding using sale funds. So we are project, we're proposing a fully gated community that huge green space, make it into a park area, sidewalks for the tenants to be able to take a walk on a beautiful day. The retail section, if it's an MD now or a restaurant or some another tenant, that they'd be able to have easy access to. And we would do one ones and two twos. The majority, of, I, we probably propose about 75% ones, 25% twos, just because of the elderly demographic. Usually one ones are kind of what they want. Two twos for if they have a live-in staff or they have family that wants to stay with them. So for our sources and uses, we would use sale financing from Florida Housing Finance Corp. We'd apply for that. And we project about from if we are awarded it, about a one year break ground until we break ground. Most likely it'd be sooner, but just to give us some space, one year we'd project if we're awarded the funding this year to break ground in approximately a year. So that's the end of our presentation, so I'll open it up to. I have one other statement for a recap, and it's uh, one of the sheets we have in here, and it's not about us, it's what the city wants. It's the city's property. We made these suggestions for elderly and family. We prefer to do elderly ourselves internally as a company, and uh, there's a great shortage of elderly housing in South Dade. Um, but we're open for any kind of suggestions or anything. We'd like to partner with the community and um, <clears throat> we're willing to buy the land and even sign a, um, like we did with something with Boynton Beach, where we signed a, um, a, a rescind agreement to, with the city. If we don't build within a certain amount of time, they could purchase it back from us from what we paid for it. But that would give us the incentive that we're putting our money where our mouth is, and we're going to do everything in our best faith effort to get it done. Mr. So, Pleasy, you know, just we're just for the record, Mayor, if I could just to incorporate it into the record, there was one element on there. They mentioned that they're, they'd have to apply for a, a funding for the, these projects. So just wanted to get you on the record to the process of the funding process with the state and when, how long that process takes and what happens if you don't get the funding. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Um, the process right now, we're, well, there's, there's good news and bad news. The good news, it comes out every year. The bad news is the application cycle for the sale funding, which they're mentioning here, um, has to be in by the end of the month. 
So then it won't come available for another year. Then also, too, we have Day County surtax funds, which Day County is probably the richest county in the state of Florida, one of the richest country, counties in America for affordable housing and with their, surplus, with their surtax program. So with the surtax program, we've had a huge success with the county. This last year, we were able to uh, obtain a $4.5 million surtax loan for a community we're about to build up on 268th, just east of US-1. Um, we were also able, because we've been in the development business for so long, that we have so many projects that were once funded through surtax that if you pay, if you refinance it and you pay off the surtax loan and you already have a development about to break ground and you need gap funding you could rechannel your money from that one to another one there's a county ordinance for that so we were able to take four and a half million dollars of county money and then we took 2.8 million dollars of refinance surtax that we were just refinancing another deal with and we applied it to that to build 200 units there so um, we have a lot of uh, we we have an incredible experience in this industry. Um, we know the financing, the banks. We know the government agencies have an impeccable reputation with them, and um, with the county and with the state. Um, you could ask Commissioner Moss; he knows this all very well, and and Commissioner Cava. They've been very very supportive for the commissioners in this area. But if you uh, if you could just be clear on the on the question of when the financing when the when the funding decisions are made it's a competitive program so what i'm told it's one in 10 applications get approved or so, or is this a different program and if so you just give the uh, the board okay. just a sense of Thank what you. the possibilities are of getting that funding and what happens if it doesn't get funded okay no that's perfect those are very good questions you have a very good city manager by the way who really does his homework um number one <clears throat> 9% credits are the ones that every developer dreams of getting because it means that you're going to make the, the maximum fee that's obtainable. It's the easiest, lowest leverage, easiest financing, and the world comes to you and everything works perfect. And that's the, that's the one that everybody wants. Unfortunately, in the state sale loan, the rules say that anything south of, I think it's 248th Street or Cutler Ridge, has to be over 111 units. So because of the zoning, this site will not qualify for that. So the great funding that everybody wants, and that's the very competitive one, city manager, George, is the one we can't apply for. So then you come to the sale funds, which means that everything's tougher, everything's harder, and it's harder to get your sources and uses together. So you get sale funding, you have to go in for tax exempt bond funding, and then you're layering all these different subsidies and then you're still having a hard time making your numbers work. Um, that application cycle in Day County, last year I think maybe 70% uh, of them won. Only 30% didn't. So we've had a real high, high success rate. Um, one reason being is, is the state of Florida has a lot of sale funding. But because of our surtax program where you could come in, you see, not only do you have to get the sale, but you have to layer it with the county subsidy too. So most of the places, most counties in Florida didn't even compete for sale funding because they couldn't make their numbers work. But because of Day County and you, like, like I was just mentioning, the project on 268th was a sale application we put in, but we got the sale plus we had to get surtax from the county too and that's what made it work so it's a layer you have to layer your um, financing and day county is very very uh, rich county for that so we're very blessed on that so i don't know if i can it but last year it was 70 percent i know we put in one we won it so i was happy anything else mr manager is that good anything else mr sweezy right now yeah um any questions from the board? Mr. Burgess, you just a point of clarification. So their, their preference would be option two, is what you guys are, are, are yes. would be your, your preference. Yes. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple quick questions. The, um, so the, on the elderly site, 
the green space, the park, what, what's the size approximately? Because you know, in, in the site plan, it's hard to tell. You know, what, what kind of space is that? Are you talking Are half you acre, how many quarter like square acre? Feet or? How, many, how, many, uh, how, how many stories? It's going to be three stories. No, the green, no, no, the, the, green the park, space. the green space that you're proposing on the elderly park oh, site. The green space. Yeah, what what are you talking? Is that a quarter acre site, half acre? No, no, no. It's like three quarters of an acre. It's quite a bit. Right. I, I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't have the exact numbers. It's going to be. I don't have the exact number on that. Um, Just a approximate. Mayor, but it looks like it, by looking at it and then to scale, it looks like a half acre at least. Okay, that's it's why I was just trying to get an idea of what type of green space, and then. I assume we're talking about um, whether it's the elderly side or it's the family living side. You know, these are going to be subsidized. They're not going to be market rate. No, it's not going to be market rate. Okay. And then the also the the 268 project you were talking about, going back to the city manager's question, how long did that process take from the time you applied for the sale or the surtax to fund that project to the time you got it built? What was what was your time period? Roughly around a year. About a year. Yeah. Okay. That's all the questions I had for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Sweezy, you mentioned it at one point, <clears throat> if for some point you uh, failed to get this, we would be able to buy it back. And, and I didn't hear what your comment was, was at the price you paid or, or, or what, what was your no, comment? No, it would be at the price we paid. OK. It's just. Um, one thing that, that worries me is 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 been sitting here for 11 almost going going on 12 years almost and and I see a lot of renderings come in and then when we get to a site plan they're not the same thing um, John uh, um, commissioner and, you know, and I know if we give you the property if, if we were to make the choice tonight to give you the property and we get a rendering and then when you show up I, who knows if I'll even be here with the process that goes on. I probably won't be, but whoever takes my seat, I would like for them to be able to have a, a project that they're going to be proud of with the renderings being what the project is. And, and that's one of my concerns is, is that. I don't mind proffering saying that we'll bring it back to the commission for your approval. Well, I understand that, but it, we're, you're asking us to give land tonight with renderings, and, and, and we've done that on several occasions, and, and it's come back to bite us, unfortunately. So, and, I, and I understand renderings are renderings, and this is a big plan tonight, but um, so that's one thing. I also would, I would have liked to have seen, personally, more retail space. I think that area over there, and, 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 and for what uh, uh, one little medical store there, to me, it does not help that area or the residents that is going to be there, Dr. Medical Now, or whatever your proposal was that your gentleman said was a perfect idea. I would like to see a lot more retail cut in over there somehow. I think that if you're going to bring those people in, uh, they're going to need they're going to need things as supplies, the day to day living things, as do the, as does the neighborhood itself now. And um, I, you know, I know that, that that's not your specialty, but I, I certainly would like to see more retail cut into this project somehow. Whether you, uh, perhaps we even went on a couple of the buildings a, a story higher or, or whatever, and put retail on the bottom so that the, 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 so that the entire neighborhood can benefit from this, not just 180 some homes or, or excuse me, 83 units or whatever the number, exact number is in the, in the elderly plan is. So that, that was one of the things that I, would, that, that I was hoping for when, when these projects were going to come through to us. So um, perhaps there's something that we can do further down the road if, if the project was to go to you guys, but that was one of my concerns. Okay. Is there a, do you guys have a, the capability for or a thought <laughs> process where you would even envision or, or allow more retail on the area? Yeah, well, we weren't sure what the city's direction was, and I'm glad to hear that. Um, like we said in here, it's not it about shared it. it with somebody that's not with you tonight, I guess, but down the road a couple of months ago. I get maybe a former employee or, or an employee that lives down this way of yours. I'm sorry, Mr. Bass. What, what did Mr. Bell, what comment? No, I had shared with him some of my thought process. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Uh, that's I all right. I never, never made its way back to me. I'm yep. sorry. But um, we just picked this. We weren't sure. And um, we have plenty of, one thing, with elderly housing here, it's because of the density and it all being close together because of the elevators, just one building structure. We have a lot of room to put a lot of work, a lot more retail. A I think it would be beneficial for, for the entire the entire southwest community not just this particular piece of not yeah. this particular parcel so no we, we have a development now on 268th 143rd avenue where we put it's it's mixed-use residential ever right. by the kmart right 
the new Kmart there. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Sir, Ms. Fairclough? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, to be completely transparent, I am only interested in um, mixed use development, elderly only. I'm not interested in entertaining anything else outside of elderly. I have two questions for you now, and then I'll reserve the rest of my questions later. You indicated that, I guess this was for the sale funding, that the application is due by the end of the month? This month, yeah. So what month. is your plan of action moving forward for that, considering... Well, my, my plan of action now with the city, unless they voted on it tonight, we would we'd work night and day and try, and try to get it in this application cycle, which is not this Friday. I believe it's a Friday after this, yeah. um, Thanksgiving. So I guess I'll have everybody in my office. What, after Thanksgiving, it's at the end of the month. Oh, it's at the end of the month. So we have two weeks. We have to get a lot of letters and put it together. We specialize in these applications. So we're real uh, streamlined and efficient with it. And we'd, we'd submit it if we possibly can. And then uh, we'd just see what would happen with that. But like I said, it's in Dade County last year, last year, <clears throat> I think they, there was like seven applications at one out of 10. Okay, I, I mean, this is a sense of urgency. And I'm a little concerned that there is not enough information here for us to proceed tonight with giving you a green light for that, but it may be a little too preliminary to say at this point, but I'm a little concerned about that. My second question is, what has been your success rate as it relates to receiving the sale funding? Sale funding has been very, very high, maybe 80%, uh, 70, 80%, maybe even higher. And how long have you traditionally had to work on these applications and to be able to submit them in a timely fashion? How long does it generally take you? Well, usually the RFAs come out 30 days in advance. So you have 30 days to submit and they, they hit it with you. They, get, they put it out. But usually you're walking through the process so you're familiarizing yourself mm -hmm. with what requirements are needed for it. We just currently submitted um, four applications are five for the nine percent credits the ones that the uh, city manager was mentioning stand a one in ten chance of winning maybe in day county this year less might even only be three percent this year george i with the amount i hear coming with the amount that went in but with the sale it's um it's a lot less so we, we have a good rapport with the staff in the county who generate the letters and we have the ability to go in and talk to them and and, and just do the best we can. We're not miracle workers, but they know us. So when we come in, we're not like a stranger to them. Okay, my other question is, as it relates to the retail component, I understand your rationale for proffering um, a potential tenant, the MD Now Urgent Care, because of the population or the constituency in that area. But what was your rationale for the child care component? That was if there was a family de uh, demographic. That was just there if it was family. You know? Have you researched the amount of primary learning centers or early learning centers in the city? I'm so, Is there I'm so. a need? Have you researched the amount of primary learning centers or early learning centers in the city of Homestead? No, I have not. But that this be. may not be necessary. You're probably right. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. It may not um, necessarily be necessary, particularly if we are moving towards the senior citizen component, because there shouldn't be a need for, for child care. Um, I would have liked to have seen a, a stronger retail component, uh, a component that was a little bit more intentional for the area. But I haven't seen now, but I see in here that you kind of wanted direction from the city as it relates to what we wanted, because what is here is not as intentional as I would have liked to see. But um, I can understand you wanting to get direction from us. But I can tell you right now that child care component is not it. Okay, it's thank you. It. Okay. And then if, as you continue to consider that retail component, as my esteemed colleague, Councilman Burgeon said, that that component should be able to um, attract the entire Southwest community as opposed to just the residents in that area. Okay? Something to consider. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Mayor? 
That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm really happy to see something finally coming to the table here for this piece of land. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time that you have to put together this proposal. I have to agree that definitely elderly care is the way to go there. And although I would love to see more of a retail component, adding another story, I don't think really that's the way to go for that space right there. Um, but definitely something to keep in mind if we could do a little more with the retail. That's also something that's very needed. Thank so, you, Commissioner. Thank you. One thing I just, you know, one of the comments we've had, um, we'd have, we've had proposals come forward for this property in the past. And one of the things that I think that we, we've been very leery of in, in our site plans has been a, an institutional look, you know. We want an a nice architectural look to the building. We don't want it to look like elderly housing. We don't want it to look like, you know, an institutional type of a product. And and not that you have proffered that, but I'm just saying as as we're talking about, you know, what you you know you're looking for direction from you know from the city. And some of the like, as a for instance, your, your tower apartments in the city of Miami, would be a look that I think we've we've turned down before. And that's just, no, it's, it's not that you're proposing that, but I'm just, you know, as was given some guidelines as to, you know, what we've been trying to accomplish, that kind of a look was not something that we wanted to, and Councilor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it more looked like the institutional products that we really didn't want to see in the past. We wanted more of an architectural look like is um, at your ocean breeze in Boynton Beach. That's kind of more what we were looking for. Have looked, have, have, that's what we've talked about in the past anyway. So from my perspective, again, I think everybody's pretty much spot on with the fact that we're looking for, you know, more elderly housing than, than uh, you know, than probably family. Uh, this particular point, Ms. Faircloth, did you? Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. I just had one more question. Can you talk a little bit about the financing or the housing credits that you receive for the La Jolla apartments. I've been there, they, they look really nice. Okay. It's a nice product, so can you just talk a little bit about that? Sure, the, 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 okay, we have two, okay, the La Jolla apartments, they were built with Day County bonds and Day County surtax. Day County bonds and surtax. Okay, and how long, um, how long was that process? To receive that one was a lot quicker because what happens is we were able to get the the, uh, the gap funding between the bond financing which is like the equivalent of what you call the first mortgage and the uh, and, and the, the funding gap in between came from the county and because it's the county money it's a lot quicker and that's what I was going to say the second form because we're a little late for the sale now the county's coming out pretty soon with a new round of surtax funding when Oof, God, that's kind of up to the county, but um, probably in about another four months, three to four months. And when they come up with that, um, it's um, it's a lot easier to obtain. I wouldn't say it's easy to obtain, but it's easier. It's not as com it's it's competitive, but not as competitive. Okay, thank you. So if there's if there's no more questions at this time with this particular proposal, we need to go move to the um, second proposal so that we can get an idea. Of, thank you. Everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate both. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You didn't do so bad for your first one either. <laughs> the Come second here. presenter is Homestead Housing Authority. Good afternoon. Homestead Housing Authority is doing a proposal. Shane, just proposal. Shane, give us your just give us your name and address, just for the record, so. Oh, Shane White, Senior Executive Director, Homestead Housing Authority. Thank you, sir. Our proposal is based on elderly housing, um, based on our research that we've done and what we've seen. We're looking to create a 
Okay, we're looking to create four floors, 74 units. Give, give. No, 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 okay, yeah. Yeah, the next one. Okay, we're considering four floors, 74 units. Our design is based on, which we're gonna have, and I'll show you in the slide. It's gonna have a park next to it where we can have gazebos, a walking area. And on the outskirts, we're in talks with Walgreens and CVS to determine if we can get someone on the side to meet the needs of the elderly. If we get the opportunity, we'll have the waiting list and our waiting list will be basically anybody that's an elderly 62 years and older. That would be a 70 point ratio. They'd be disabled, 15 points, and they have to be a resident of Homestead not from the outside. This is for the residents of Homestead. We have several different offers that we table to the City Council. Most of those will still go into negotiations as we move forward. Can I have the joints? Okay, let me get my copy. Smaller ones. Mr. Mayor, what he's showing you is in your packet. Right. It's just, it wasn't included in his, as part of his PowerPoint. So that's why it's not on the screen, but it is in your packet. Okay. This is what we're proposing. Four floors, interior courtyard. It's gonna be 58 one bedrooms and 16 two bedrooms. Uh, the one bedrooms will be 832 square feet, two bedrooms would be 1,040 square feet. We have two recreational areas on the first floor, which is gonna be about 2,200 square feet. And we have on each floor, two laundries on either side of the building, it's two elevators. That's what the interior looks like. As it comes to the authority and to do the building and the financing, we've already, as a government agency, we basically can have, we have easy access to tax exempt bonds that will actually help us to lower the cost of the construction. Um, we can reach out to USDA who have done construction with before who has given us 1% bonds. We reached out to HUD that we can get different options of financing from them also. So we have several different options that we can explore moving forward. Would you mind just going through that process like the first applicant just explaining whether that is a competitive process or that's just based on applying, could you go through the timelines? Because I, well, think what basically, the board, I think what the board is gonna be looking at with each of these proposals, what is the likelihood that this proposal gets financed, the time frame, and how realistic it is? So you explaining your financing process would be helpful. Okay, uh, one of the items that we need to address is that the minute we're gonna be doing this construction, all the units will be built ADA. So there's no need to be doing any other type of 
modifications later on down, they are going to be ADA compliant. We'll be reaching out to HUD also, trying to get this unit designated as an elderly site. One of the key components is if we can get that as an elderly site designated by HUD, we can get the funding from HUD also. It makes it easier for us to get that from HUD. We can also tap in to USDA to help us, especially USDA has different loans that it comes to elderly programs that we can tap in. We've been dealing with them for several years. We're getting ready to close on phase five and six, to even start construction at our property, and we've reached out to them and asked them, and it's a matter of us basically sending all the documentations forward. In order for them to give us any approval, we need to have approved site plans surveys and all of that before we can move forward. But we can still go through the steps with them, knowing that we can always easily get the funding from them without an offer. All we need to do is basically supply the necessary information to both of these agencies to get our, our funding going. And Mayor, because staff met with each of the proposers beforehand, I asked these questions before, but I wanted to make sure they were on the record. My understanding of their process is it's, this is not a competitive process. You have to meet their qualifications and their criteria. And if you meet their criteria, then you get the funding. Yes, that's correct. One of the items that we're going to be using, like I said, is once we can get the approved building plans, we can get it certified by HUD as an LA unit, and that way we can tap into the funding from HUD and USDA. Did you have any renderings in any of those other boards? Did you bring any resident renderings with yes, you? Yes, I brought two others. What the front would look like and what the back would look like. That's Sorry, that's the parking area, and the park is off to my right. So this is the front, and this is the this that's is the, the front. front. You're right, right on the street, then. Yes. Okay. This is the back. Okay. And as you can see in the drawings, I have it inside the drawings where it basically shows the park off to the side, and that area that's off to the side is what we've been in talks with. Walgreens and CVS trying to see who would be interested in using that area right there. Do you want to also go through what goes on inside the building and the programming, what, what the feel is of the building inside as well? What we've done is we've reached out technically in advance already to with different agencies. If we're given the opportunity the two recreational areas inside there will be for all the residents to be downstairs, not looking at four walls, and they'll be assisting them in doing daily activities. We're even extending it to the point where on Saturdays we can get movie nights going so that they can be more involved instead of sitting inside four walls. Um, we can do other things. We can invite other entertainers to come down and to entertain them on the weekends. But we're looking to make sure that they're not just sitting inside. That's why we want them outside. We want them in the recreation area. We want to keep them busy. We want to keep them walking. We want to keep them dancing, playing dominoes, playing cards. Okay. Um, Mr. Burgess? Thank you. It could, you, you said you would get HUD trying to get it designated. So you have to get a site plan from us first. Am I understanding you correctly that we have to give you, we would have to give you the property for whatever the terms would be, and then we'd have to do a site plan and then you would go to them? Is that the process? Well, basically, if we get the opportunity to get it, I'd have to submit all this to the building department, which might need some tweaking in the drawings and stuff like that. I have to get approved drawings to send to get it designated as an elderly site. And once I have those, then I can move forward and get HUD to help me with the financing and USDA. And we're talking about 1% bonds. And Councilman, if I could clarify, because I asked this several different ways, just so I was sure I understood it. My understanding is, what they're saying is they will meet the criteria, and when they put the paperwork together and they process it, it will get approved. Yes, it will. So that was the, the thing I wasn't clear about. That 
differentiated from a process where it's a competitive funding process and somebody has to judge the application. So you really have two different paths here. And I just wanted to make sure he was clear on that for the record, because we were a little confused by that during our staff meetings. And I think that's the difference between the two. And what's a time frame once the designation is put there and, and, and that? I mean, we heard that this we're talking, we're the talking probably getting the plans through the building department and approve probably a six month process. Usually by the time we get those approved plans, it would take me a probably 90 days to get an approval from US HUD and then I can start moving on with the funding and we can get started with construction. Um, with it being a, a HUD building and not maybe being as free to build uh, architecturally as appealing as we would want, is that something that can be changed? Because uh, the renderings that I saw tonight really are not that appealing to myself. Those can be those can be changed. Basically, what we did is we don't even have a survey, so we don't know what the criteria are. So what we did is we took the aerial photos from Miami-Dade, and we came up with something that we needed to present to the city that basically said, we're interested, this is what we want to know moving forward. We're open for all kind of different recommendations, basically to move forward. We still have to determine if there's even right of ways that we need to take into consideration inside Maybe. these. My goal and, and my thought process is I'd like to make a statement with something that's built down there to start the process of helping that area to revitalize also, that's not correct. just downtown, and bringing something that the, the neighbors are proud to see and, and makes them want to participate and, and become part of it. And, and that's part of my goal as I look down there as, as we uh, perhaps look to move this parcel of property. I'm a little concerned with you going with a Walgreens or CVS. I'm not sure that helps the entire community down there the way that I would like to see. I'd like to see some more diversity, uh, different type things down there as to what can what can be brought in um, instead of just one sole provider. Uh, um, you know, different different things to help down there that, that the people need, not just perhaps a medical uh, CVS that is right around the corner already or something like that. So just some of my thoughts as, as I look at it and, and see your see your ideas presented tonight. So I'll uh, wait for the uh, rest of the questions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Ms. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say thank you for really thinking of the future of that property. I like the idea that you have with the point system. I think it's really important that we make sure it is going to be used for homestead residents. I love the idea of the courtyard and the recreational areas, the different programs to have there. I think that's so important. Um, as far as the Walgreens or the CVS, I'm not a big fan of big businesses like that, but I would have to agree and say that I think that if something like that did happen in that area, that it would really call attention to other businesses to come down as well. So I just wanted to say thank you for all the little details that you put into it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Just some follow-up questions, I guess, on, on this funding thing, because that was one of my big questions for you, is how you, know, how you were proposing the funding. Did you have dollars already available? So when it comes to, say, the HUD, and, and when you say it's guaranteed, and then it's maybe something staff has already researched at this point, but I mean, what, what are the available funds in the HUD pot? I mean, it, it, for, for the entire nation, I guess. Well, for basically, the HUD has some. Hold on, Shane. Let him finish his, let oh, him finish his question. That, that, that was kind of wrapping it up. But that, that, was, that was the first question. Well, HUD has different programs that you can tap into when it comes down to funding like that. One of the programs that you have is a 202 program. It might be not so much active because there's not a lot of people using it, but there's always funds that you can tap into when it comes to HUD, especially when it comes to a project like this. They want to see something of this favor, basically instead of multifamily, mixed use, stuff like that. They're looking for, if you look at the demographics between here and most of Miami, you won't see a lot of elderly sites. Nobody wants to get into that because you're looking at income restriction, they might not be able to raise rents a lot, stuff like that. We don't mind it. Basically, we're here to basically look out for the elderly, and that's who we're trying to make sure that is comfortable. Everybody has forgotten them. One of the things that I can say is that I've always tried to 
be an advocate for them. One of the things you hear, and I've been doing this for 26 years, I've paid my rent, I've paid my utilities, now how do I eat, I'll pay my medicine. They always have that vice versa. It's, it's sad when you listen to that on a daily basis. I'm trying to get these funds in and even get HUD to issue benefits where they can assist them in paying their rent so they don't have to sit there and determine do I take medicine or do I eat? But, but I mean, is it, is it regionally? I mean, so does HUD set aside at the national level so much for Southeast Florida, for the state of Florida, for Southeast They have region? it regionally. Huh? It's, uh, it's throughout the United States that anybody can tap into it. Our local offices here, you can basically reach out to them, show them the plans, and I've already done that because I am constructing 105 floors, 120 units close to my property, right on the soccer field, right next to my office. That process is going through the building department now, and I think the last thing that is left is Durham to approve that before those comes out so I can submit those on to HUD. So I've already started one process already. This would be my second if I'm given the opportunity, but I've started one by my office already, and it's going to be five floors, 120 units. Okay, I mean, because I, I know we've tried to play with HUD as well when we've had some of our projects and we've applied as also, and I don't know that it's that guaranteed. I mean, there, there's a limited finite amount of funds that are available, so I'm just trying to get a feel for. Well, correct, correct me if I'm, it's a loan, right? You it, it's got to be a loan. So what they okay. do is they it's go to be a loan. pro forma, this is what we would charge, and then, and, and basically it's, it's, uh, it's a bond program. Okay. But right, so you, that, you have loans and there is other programs out there that you can tap into that even as they give you this to help with the financing, they give you stipulations like, okay, you can't sell the, the building for the next 20 years. Those are the type of things that they can assist you with and if you're basically going to keep it, then you don't have to worry about paying all of those high right. okay. comeback. So we have several different opportunities which we're exploring now for the 120 floors that we're doing. I can, in about a few, two weeks, probably three more weeks, I can send an idea of what it isn't going to be when we did our 120 and show the steps that we've been going through and how easy it's going to be for us. Okay. And that made more sense. I was thinking this was some sort of a grant program that they were applying for. There was money. So these are these are loans through the government. So those are much more easy or accessible. Well, as a government agency, it's very easy right. for us. Okay, so perfect. the only other thing would be then he, he has to be able to show them where the revenue stream comes in. They know what their programs are for who goes in the building. So where there's a little bit of ambiguity here is depending on how many disabled he gets, then there's a program for mm -hmm. that. And so as he's thinking about his tenant mix, that helps him define what his revenue stream is going to be. And that offsets the payments for the loans. That's correct. And that was part of my next line of questioning was, was management and programming. Something I didn't think to ask the, the prior proposer, but you're proposing, is, is Homestead Housing going to run this elderly facility, or are you guys yes. bringing in an outside? No. Homestead manager? Housing is going to be running it. So you guys are going to put together whatever program you're representing, that's or you're correct. going to manage the, okay, and this will also be subsidized? And that's one of the things I would try and with HUD, is to get subsidies on some of the units, if not all, some. Okay, so then if you can't get it through HUD, then that would be market rate at that point for? That would be correct. Okay. Um, and then prior projects, what's your experience with prior elderly projects? I know you, Homestead Housing has, has the, the projects that you have now and the housing that you have, but have you ever run a, a elderly or built a elderly? Well, basically, in Miami-Dade, one of the things that I did at, with Miami-Dade Housing is I used to help oversee some of the elderly sites inside there. We had to do improvements. Um, when I went to Fort Lauderdale Housing, I was basically helping when we had to do the transformation from tearing down the elderly sites and rebuilding them because they weren't in the condition that HUD would approve them to continue. We, we saw the different options. HUD even came in and gave us different um, benefits on the units where they were basically able to afford it. So just seeing all of those four or five years ago, working with all those different programs is what I'm trying to bring to Homestead Housing Authority now. Okay. And then um, just kind of echo some of my, my colleagues' sentiments. I, I do agree that I think a diversity of retail would be better than, say, a big box store going there of some type uh, because I think it would be good to have multiple types of businesses, multiple types of, of um, 
you know, places for the community to go versus just having one option as one big box, you know, to, to kind of break it up into smaller retail outlets. Um, I think that's all the questions I have. I have obviously more comments about the overall picture, but I'll wait till we get to kind of the open, open part of the meeting. All right, sir. Mr. Burgess. Thank you. <clears throat> to Mr. White, I believe, he, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you are only going to allow Homestead residents into this facility. Is that correct? That's correct. So you guys set up a process of, how, walk me through that process of how that goes. Basically, we'll set up what is called, during the construction process, we'll be accepting applications to, for the units. What we're going to do is, based on the criteria. Anybody that is elderly, 72 and older, would have 70%. Anybody that is disabled gets 15, and anybody that is a city resident gets 15 points. That's where your 100 points comes in. What we're trying to do is basically set it up where most of your residents inside the city of Homestead is going to be the ones that we're going to be basically offering the units though so, instead of someone coming from the outside we're okay. trying to make sure that it's available here within the city of homestead so the, the city residents not zip code homestead residents uh, the city residents okay thank you and i didn't get to ask the other gentleman that question but, mm -hmm. but that was a great point you brought and up he thank had you. on his slide also waiting list could you describe that because you mentioned that during our yes and i just went over it a while ago basically it's the same thing with the waiting list when you start accepting, it comes back where 62 and older gets 70 points. Anybody that is disabled gets 15 points, and anybody that is a resident of Homsa gets 15 points. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's where you come up with your 30 points. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that everybody that's going to be eligible for the 74 units are city of Homestead residents. You had talked okay. about the, the demand, though. Could you explain that as well, what your demand is? Yes, we're looking at the demand, and even one of the sites that I had visited where there's an early site in Color Ridge that basically still have 228 persons on the waiting list, and that hasn't moved in the past four years. Right here in the city of Homestead, we look at the demographics. We have more than enough city of resident city of homes and residents to occupy 74 units much less the 120 that we'll be doing and, and and you came to the unit number unit count of 74 is that a particular reason as to why well we is did it based on the manageable or density based on what we had we still have to go back to a survey look at everything inside it to see if we can even go five floors so that is open based on all of the information that we need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Ms. Fairclough? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't want to continue to echo the same questions that my colleagues have articulated, but I'm just still a little hung up on the, the financing. Yes. I've heard a lot of options on both sides, but not any definitive dollars on both sides. It appears that there is probably a clearer path forward for you, considering that as long as you meet the criteria and qualifications that the money is accessible to you, but that still hasn't been determined yet. My questions are, this is not exclusive for homestead residents. They just receive additional points if they are homestead residents. That's correct. Okay, so we have to be clear on that. It's just not the city of Homestead. They just get an additional 15 points. Um, so anyone under 62, they're not eligible to qualify? That's correct. Okay. Also, can you just talk a little bit more about the amenities that would be on this property? Okay. Um, proposed property. We propose, it's going to have two elevators. We have laundry rooms on both sides of each floor we have so each laundry room is going to have wash and dryers we have it where master bathroom is going to have bathtubs we have the closets the kitchen counters and everything is going to be ADA. So the kitchen counters are going to be lower enough 
to meet those criteria, and we chose to do it ADA because basically it doesn't need to be refurbished two or three years down the road if somebody needs all those accessibility. We're going to build it where the accessibility is in place now. So those are some of the amenities that is going to be inside there. But as it relates to the common areas, what type of amenities in the common areas? I think I heard you mention earlier a green space. Yes, the green space would be on the outside. That would be right. the park. Um, the park would be 17,000 square feet. Those would have a gazebo. It has a walking track. Um, they can sit outside read. There's benches. We have the other space in the open interior courtyard right in the middle. That's an open space also where they can sit and those courtyards are sitting right outside the two recreational areas. So they have a lot of areas where they can go to. And we try not to keep them inside. We're trying to get them to get outside to be more active. Mm -hmm. I, I particularly like the fact that you have considered partnerships yes. and bring in partnering with different agencies to provide different activities for the senior citizens. This is something that has been a passion of mine for a couple of years. So I like the fact that you're interested in collaborating with um, community agencies to be able to provide some support to the residents. And moving forward, whoever gets the property, I would recommend that you uh, reach out to um, the city of Homestead because we're really working towards putting funding for senior programming. So that is a great opportunity to partner with the city to um, bring in some support for our seniors. And my final comment is as it relates to the commercial space, there's a common theme up here, um, not just a big box Walgreens CVS retailer. I understand the rationale mm -hmm. because it's great for the um, constituency group because of the medications and things of that sort. Walgreens and CVS would seem like a, a natural fit, but we want you to be a little bit more intentional and perhaps consider like a partial with different bays, bringing in different type of commercial uses okay. that can be accessible for the surrounding community as well as the residents on this property. I believe those were all of my questions at this point. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Manager, I don't know, um, if that's all you have, Shane? Yes. Let us have the conversation, and, and we may need to ask either, either group to come back up, but let okay. us have a little, inter, a little conversation here amongst ourselves. Um, one of the, one is a, is a, is a proposal of 99-year lease, one is a $100,000, and one is a $500,000 payment to the city. Is there any idea what that property is worth? Has there been an appraisal on that property? Yes, sir. Yes, sir it appraised at 455000 455000 Yes. Mayor, we wanted to be careful not to force you all into one or the other. Correct. We wanted to kind of start with, do you have a preference in terms of senior housing versus other types? Did you have a preference in terms of only residential or commercial? Is it something completely different? So you want to kind of start getting, unless you all know there's a particular proposal that you want here, in which case we would ask for the direction on that, and then we'll start negotiating a development agreement and come back to you with greater detail. So there's a lot of options for you on the table, which is one of them or none of them or concepts, and we're happy to go with uh, whatever uh, direction you give us at this point. Well, it, it, I mean, to, to that point, I mean, obviously one of the options is, is to wait and see if there's any more. How long, was, how long did you advertise or how, long, how did this process take place? Public notice was publicized for 30 days. One other thing I will mention is the housing authority we went to and asked, encouraged them to submit a proposal, but then we also saw other people were interested, so that's we started with three and then one dropped off, but we did kind of initiate some of this ourselves. Uh, that being said, you know, if you wanted to do a more formal and longer solicitation, we're happy to do that. Just that, you know, it's, it's really just a function of time and how anxious you are to get started. 
No, I don't. I didn't. I didn't suggest we need to do a long or formal presentation. I was just concerned with how long was it. You know, how long was it on the street necessarily for other people to have access to? You know, the opportunity to come forward. So, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just. You know, I think I think it's one of those things. I mean, to the point I, to start there. I mean, I don't. I don't know that we need to go back out and start the process over. I think we have two. Two credible applicants. I think we have two proposals that are that are different in nature. I don't know that I, I completely like either one of them in its whole in its currently presentation form. I think that there's there's pieces of both that I think are good. Um, you know, but I also think that I don't I don't know that I have enough information sitting here to choose between the two. I mean, we we have some good stuff. I think staff has had a chance to fully vet these out, and I think if we were to sit here and ask staff a lot of questions, we might get the answers we need. It would take a while to do it in this form from the dais. But I don't know that I've personally had a chance to fulfill and ask all the questions that I have, both from financing, from aesthetics. Um, you know, you have one developer that has a lot of experience, has built a lot of these types of projects, and you have another that, that has less experience. But you have one that, you know, because it's publicly funded versus, say, privately funded, maybe has the ability to offer better programming, um, to maybe to do some more creative things because it's not a profit-driven venture. Uh, so there's a lot of positives in, on, on both sides, but I just don't know that I can. I couldn't pick one tonight. I couldn't tell you go forth with one of them specifically. I think I could tell you to go forth and keep trying with both, uh, but not one. I mean, so to weigh in on a couple of the items, the purchase price, you know, obviously, you know, one's got closer to a fair market value purchase price than the other. The other has options potentially to allow us to maintain control of the site through a 99-year lease so that if it isn't successful, we have the ability to maybe take it back and start over again. So there's some positives and negatives there. Um, you know, I prefer the, the elderly product. I think that we've all kind of spoken, or most of us have spoken on that. I think from a density standpoint alone, you know, to allow 20 units per acre there in a normal apartment style would generate a lot of traffic in that area in a roadway system that's not prepared or, or capable of handling high density traffic, where elderly is, is a product that generates less traffic and is less, um, you know, taxing, I think, on the area itself. And so it makes more sense to go with an elderly product. Um, so I mean that, that's kind of where I am, and I can go. There's a bunch of other items, but I think I just wanted to like, lay the groundwork where I was. I'll see where my colleagues are, and then you know make a decision accordingly. But, but I, it's hard for me to say tonight one way or another with one of these particular. It, as you all give us feedback, it would be helpful if if we at least know this consensus on certain basic concepts. The one would be: Is there consensus on senior housing versus another type? Is there consensus on is there some sort of a commercial requirement? Is there any kind of consensus on the issue of do you need to have money for is money for the site a priority? Is the ability to get and staff was careful not to rank either of these proposals because we weren't really sure what your priorities were. So for example, we weren't sure is your priority you want to get started quickly and you want to pick the one that is most likely to get funding and quickly, or does that not concern you? So there are a bunch of things that the more information you give us, it would be helpful so that we can figure out what to do next. Mayor, if I just, right here, you uh, have while I have the floor, I'll just give you feedback on things I didn't touch. Retail, I think I spoke about and others, but to me, yeah, retail is an important part of the site. I think that not only is it the housing side, in this case, senior housing, my preference, but, but I think providing retail space that is beneficial to the community as a whole, um, and preferably a diversity of, of uh, commercial that provides multiple options uh, for the residents for different products or different services in that location I think is important. Timing wise, I think we'd all like this to move quickly, uh, or at least I would like this to move quickly. However, I want to do it right. So I don't think doing it quickly over overrides doing it right. So I think whichever way or whichever developer proposal is going to give us the best product overall um, and the best chance of generating a successful product would be would be my choice over say one that can start tomorrow. Um, I think I covered all the questions. So thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Ms. Fairclough? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, you did a great job with articulating <laughs> everything that I think he read my notes. <laughs> so I, I completely agree. I think both applicants had, you know, some advantages and disadvantages on both of the proposals. And with that, I'm not comfortable with moving forward with either one of them tonight. Um, I would ask that both of them continue to just flesh out the, the programming, the purchase price, um, partnerships, and retail. Those are some very key uh, components for me. 
And when I, I mentioned intentional a lot with the space, and what I mean by that, just to give you an example, you're considering the CVS, the Walgreens, which is great because there's a market for that, but outside of a, a big box, there is a minority pharmacist right here in the city of Homestead, Homestead Community Pharmacy, a minority um, business, perhaps reaching out to him to see if he would like a satellite location right there at that site. He lives in the city of Homestead, has a pharmacy, a pharmacy in the city of Homestead. That would appeal to that base, and it's one of our locals right mm -hmm. here in the city of Homestead. So that would be a great um, person to contact. His name is Dr. Claude Kondo from Homestead Community Pharmacy. So really look at the demographics of the area and have like a laser-like focus on the programs, the partnerships, and the retail that you would like to bring into the community to make sure it's not just a one-size-fits-all approach, but it's something definitely that the community can benefit and um, profit from. So as for me, I recommend both of you go back and really fine-tune um, your presentations and your proposals, and then come back to us with something more solid and intentional. Agreed. Yes, all ma'am. Mr. Roth. Thank you, Mayor. I just uh, I didn't get a chance to thank Mr. Sweezy and Mr. White for believing in the Southwest section. It's been a long time for development down there, and I agree wholeheartedly with everything that's been said here about the extra retail space, bringing more services to the Southwest section. Um, I think the architecture on the buildings will actually have to conform more to what the Southwest Master Plan says versus some mm -hmm. of the other things that have been um, put out there. Uh, I also think that in the next presentations, you need to show what the benefit not only to the elderly population is, but to the city of Homestead and what the value of that land may be worth uh, to you in the long run versus $500,000 or $100,000 or a 99-year lease. Um, I believe in the development portion of it, but I also believe we have to protect the city and its assets as well. And that's an asset that the city controls. It has controlled for a long time. It's got a lot of controversy, got a lot of history. Maybe we can put a monument on it and say, hey, this is what's happened here all these years or whatever. But uh, it does have some value to not only the developers, but to the city of Homestead as an asset. So. I'm in agreement. We can't decide on this tonight. There's there's no way to do that. Um, but I think both Mr. Sweezy and Mr. White have a very good idea of what, what we're looking for now and uh, to sweeten the pot a little bit more you know, to the city as well. So uh, with that, I'll rest and give you my blessings and negotiations with whatever you guys work out because Thank you. I know you guys and your staff work very hard and Kamitra, you've worked very hard on this. and. You've answered a lot of questions for me as well, so and I appreciate that work. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Burgess. Thank you, Mayor. It, 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 am I allowed to ask one question of the applicant? Yeah, absolutely. I, I know Mr. Sweezy's on crutches, but perhaps his associate could come up for a quick question because you didn't talk about who and what, where you find your residential base. So if you could tell us where, or do you guys go to the city of Homestead? Are you bringing people from Palm Beach County? Are we bringing people from downtown Miami, or where are we bringing people to, to come have, and live down here? Could have taken well, uh, the Mr. Sweezy, answer that. Okay. Could have brought the mic. I was trying to I, save I, you from I having think to he's use a little things. green for that one, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, what we usually do is, is there's such a demand for affordable housing and any kind of housing with subsidies. Just by you building, you just open up a clubhouse or you open up a leasing office, and, and usually the local community comes in and fills it up. Um, we've outreached before to the local churches, too. We've always found that's been a valuable source. As a matter of fact, even our property up in um, Narantia, we reached out to, um, to quite a few local churches, and uh, from even from Florida City on up. Right. to Narantia. Not because I would like to see our, obviously I would like to see our residents get first priority, you know. Uh, yeah. But you have to be very, I, I heard these comments on this and I could just tell you by being a landlord of 3,500 units for yeah. 40 years and you have to be very careful of discrimination. 
and uh, and I'd be very careful about how I would say I'm only going to do. No, I didn't say I was only going to do or it. something like that. But what you would do is you do a lot of community outreach. We do flyers. We uh, really I found the best source and the best quality of tennis, particularly if you're going to go for an older base, is your local churches. And, okay. Uh, and that's an interesting that's, that that's how you, you find them. So thank you. And and I'm not saying only City of Homestead because I'm sure that the loans that either one of you are, 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 uh, acquire would have, you're not allowed to just specify one way or the other. You have other. to be very, very careful right. on all of that. Right. Even, even if you require, and that I, I'm going to tell you, I just had this too and I was shocked. There's no federal regulation to it, but just the way the law is that you'll get challenged on and it'll cost you a fortune whether you win or lose so you don't, you could stipulate. Um, if you require, you to even restrict how many people you can put in a unit, you can't even do that. Right. There's really no federal regulation to it, so if you look in the federal regs, there's nothing. But I just had something like that happen to, to us, and they said no. But you know, you're going to spend two million dollars, and why don't you just say fine, and you won't do it anymore, and that's it. So okay. I said okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, for the manager, uh, uh, my preference also would be to, to see some senior housing over there. I believe, it, as Councilwoman Faircloth has, has talked for years, there's a, there's a, definitely a need for it over in that area. Um, I would like to see some more, as I brought up to, to both applicants, more commercial component and, and more diversity in, the, in, in it instead of just a MD now or something uh, of that. Uh, to be aesthetically pleasing not and to help the entire area not just this particular parcel of what 3.6 acres or four acres whatever the rounded off number is and that and obviously we're never going to recoup the money that the city has into that property but obviously the maximum amount that we can get from either party is is always a always a plus so that's where i'm at thank you mayor Thanks, thank sir. you to both applicants mr maldonado thank you mayor <clears throat> you know it's obvious that, again, with the, the history of this location and the southwest section, my hope and, and when, I, when I look at that location, I was wondering and thinking if this would be, you know, the, the, uh, a location of a kind of a, a, a rebuilding or reestablishing um, the south, uh, southwest area. You know, we've invested here in the downtown area and we've put in a lot of effort. And because of that, we're starting to see the results of all of our work. And I had mentioned it uh, to Kamitra uh, in our discussion that, you know, I asked the same question, you know, how long did we go out? Um, you know, did we put enough effort like we did something in the downtown area? Obviously, it's a different, you know, different area, uh, different area. But nonetheless, I think it's as important because I was wondering if, you know, would this be a catalyst to something else in the southwest area? Could this be that that move that will make you know the southwest section uh, revitalize again so that was kind of my hope and my concern and my discussion that i that i had uh, originally so um you know something my main concern that that the southwest community would be able to benefit as a whole which of course uh, uh, councilman burgess had mentioned uh, for me was the most important part so on this site, I mean, I'm okay with the, the senior uh, living facility or senior facility because yes, there is that need. I know that uh, we I worked with uh, Cherry Village in the past and they have a, a waiting list that's been going forever. And I've been at the location when you're seeing families still coming looking for a place because I don't have a place for my father. So that is a huge concern. Um, you know, and, and Homestead, and of course, not everyone can afford the Palace Gardens, so we're looking for facilities like this. So I, it is important. Um, so I'm okay with the, the senior uh, portion of it. Um, I would like to see more commercial as well there, again, for the benefit of the rest of the community. And even if it's not, a, a, if it's, let's say commercial, but maybe a location even for community use um, to be to be used. I know that we have the FICO Williams, and I had mentioned that, um, but maybe uh, within that site, a small site that the community could use as well, I think would be a benefit for that. Just my idea, something that I had thought about. Um, and the, the time is not an issue. It's been sitting there for how long? Right. And so 
Um, I'm glad to see it that we're finally working on this and moving it forward, but I'd, I'd want to make sure that it's done right. So I'm not in a hurry to get it done. Like, you know, you guys bring me a proposal next week and we're going to close this deal like in two weeks because I want to see it next year, you know. So I just want whatever we do, that we do what's best for the community, that it won't get benefit. That's, that's where, where I'm um, sitting on this. And what was the last one? I, I jotted it down earlier, but um, so. For now, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and so, good luck with that. I know Thank it's you. in good hands with the team that we have. I'm not worried about that. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. So, Mr. Manager, you've got pretty good direction. I don't think yes. anybody's willing or wanting to move forward tonight. The applicants have both gotten an earful of what, you know, ideas are out there, and obviously you and your staff. So, um, perfect. Thank you very you got much. It? Good All feedback. Right, Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for the uh, two applicants that came forward and continue to work with our staff. Um, and uh, let's see if we can put something together that passes the board's uh, approval here. Okay. Thank you. So moving on to tab four, Kamitra. Yes, sir. On April 4, 2011, the CRA board unanimously, unanimously approved resolution CRA 2011-04-04 creating the Not-for-Profit Grant Evaluation Committee, CRA NFP Grant Committee. The CRA NFP Grant Committee is responsible for reviewing applications for the CRA's annual NFP grants and making recommendations for their award to the CRA board. Staff has confirmed that Amanda Greer, Emily Joyner, Hugh Hudson, Sean Dorsley, Susan Numa, Newman, and LaWanda Bragg are interested in being reappointed. Julio Guzman is interested in being appointed. Staff recommends that the CRA board consider the appointment and reappointment of the following members to the CRA not-for-profit NFP grants committee. Amanda Joyner, Emily, Amanda Greer, Emily Joyner, Hugh Hudson, Sean Dorsley, Julio Guzman, Susan Newman, and LaWanda Bragg. Any, any questions from the board? Moved and seconded. Okay, before I call it, uh, any comments from the public? Uh, we're reappointing uh, board members and appointing a new board member to the not-for-profit um, board. Seeing none, close the public portion. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board member Ross? Yes. Board member Bailey? Yes. Board member Burgess? Yes. Board member Fairclaw? Yes. Vice Chairman Shelley? Yes. Chairman Porter? Yes. The motion carries. Um, thank you. Any reports? Anything from CRA? Anything left? Sir, that's it. Managers, man, anything? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? All in favor? Motion carries. Um, give us about five minutes. We'll go into the special call.